The title of today's presentation is at the end. Thank you for your patience. You'll understand why when we get there. So, back in the mid to late 80s, Nintendo was the top of the game. Thanks to their little friend Rob, they'd successfully brought video games from the video game crash of 1983 back to something of prominence. Every other game company didn't have the goal of becoming a household name. They had the goal of becoming the rival to Nintendo. Sega had the right idea. They recognized that, similar to Disney, the recognizability of a central mascot character and a stable of fun side characters was keeping Nintendo top of mind. So they got to work trying to create a Mario killer. While they did make some missteps with a focus on Alex Kidd for some reason, I, I like Alex Kidd, but he wasn't going to fit the bill. They hit something right with Mr. Needle Mouse, a sassy little prickle pile that was eventually morphed and molded into our boy, Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic was cool. He wasn't some happy plumber full of smiles and pep. He had a furrowed brow, a snarky smile. He wagged his finger at you after to say, nuh-uh, you can't handle me. And he ran fast. I know it's a meme now, but it really was kind of tricky to get used to the speed of a Sonic game after getting used to the comparatively sluggish Mario gameplay. Sonic was a smash hit. Look at these numbers. Those are some good numbers. That's, that's two billion dollars Sonic the Hedgehog has made. Sega rocketed up from obscure arcade developers to a household name. The real console war began. Sega or Nintendo? Sonic or Mario? Blast processing or old reliable? Things got wild for a while in there. Well, Nintendo hit something of a slump as they were pumping out interesting but still very familiar games on their new SNES, Sega made Sonic something huge. He was so cool they even got Michael Jackson to collab on the soundtrack. Allegedly, anyway. If he did, it was uncredited, and no one can agree if it was Sonic CD or Sonic 3, but I digress. Things were going great. Then the late 90s came and brought with it 3D polygonal gaming. It would be foolish for these major franchises to ignore this huge new technology. Nintendo got cracking on Super Mario 64 and The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, which are still considered the benchmarks for 3D games. Sega put out Sonic Adventure, which... Well, you can see for yourself. <laughs> it, it was apples and oranges. Sega had no clue what they were doing. However, that didn't deter the fans. Not yet. In fact, Sonic Adventure 1 and 2, at least when 2 was re-released on GameCube as Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, did pretty well among the fans. Sonic Heroes and Shadow the Hedgehog dipped a bit, but Sega was able to coast on Sonic's popularity for almost a full decade before it all came crashing down. Sonic 06. It was a mess. Nobody could deny that. Sega had already pulled out of the console market quite a while ago in 2001, so the only thing keeping them relevant was the Sonic IP. Now, that was effectively gone. There was still a hardcore fan base sticking around, but Sonic was officially pushed into the niche category. Sega was still doing well financially, falling back on their massive arcade and pachinko market. But as far as the public was concerned, they're a thing of the past. After several more titles that quietly flew under the radar, with the occasional blip of a Sonic Generations or Sonic Boom that got everyone buzzing about Sonic again for a bit, it was 2018. Sonic hadn't been relevant in over a decade. So Hollywood made one of its many genius ideas, let's greenlight a Sonic movie. Okay, yeah, it was greenlit in 1993, but it wasn't until Sony got the rights in 2014 that it actually went into production. In 2017, Paramount got the rights and the team and continued production. By 2018, we saw the promo images, the posters, and everyone collectively went, uh, it's not what he really looks like, right? We waited for the trailer to drop, hoping that it would reveal something new about the design, and nope. It was so much worse. Sonic is just ugly and creepy. He looks way more like the alien he's supposed to be as far as the film we eventually got said. The internet collectively laughed at this big budget gaffe by a clueless studio. You can tell that they didn't care, as animator Max Schneider stated that fans would object to the redesign, but general audiences would not care as had been the case with the 2014 TMNT film. Ignoring the fact that people collectively hated those designs too, that's an incredibly shitty attitude to have about the design of your main character. But yay, through yonder window breaks, tis a tweet on May 2nd, 2019 by the director stating that the character will be redesigned. It meant a three month delay, 
but it was the best decision they could have made. Well, second best, because the best decision was bringing on the best man for the job, Tyson Hess. See, Tyson drew for the Sonic comic, both under Archie Comics and IDW, and he animated the promos for Sonic Mania, including Sonic Mania Adventures, a super underrated online cartoon. Go check, it's on YouTube. Go check it out, it's free. More importantly, he's a fan. This is a fan comic he made before he did anything official. He knows what made Sonic fun and what people loved about Sonic. He understood that Sonic, as a character, is his design. Sonic has only survived through a dozen crap games because his design is so phenomenal. So, first and foremost, he had to bring things back to the real baseline. He found a happy medium between the classic Sonic of the Genesis area, the sleek modern Sonic, and even included the fur that was so important to the film's producers for some reason. They specifically said, he has to have fur or he'll look naked. I don't know. More importantly though, he remembered what Sonic is. Sonic is cool. Not our cool, kid cool. Sonic only became a sleek shitty boy because that was, that's what was cool in 2006. As adults, it's easy to forget that kids have a very specific idea of what is and isn't cool. And it changes all the time. Tyson didn't forget. Tyson looked at what it is that kids like today, what the new cool is. He broke it down, he worked it out, and he locked onto it. Kids nowadays don't want an edgy guy or a cute little cartoon. Kids today like one thing in particular, dancing. Just let that play out for a second. I'm so happy, I found this in just a random image search. TikTok and Fortnite should make it clear. Kids love dancing, not just dancing, but silly dancing. So when it comes down to redesigning and reanimating Sonic, what do you do to make sure he's a smash hit? It should be so obvious. You make Sonic floss not once, but twice in this film. And that is the title of this presentation. Thank you very much.